Hey there. Okay, we are live. Oh my gosh. I just forgot to swing the bottom of my chair around. I have like this really weird chair that I use. Um, it, the bottom swings so I can put my legs up or not. So anyway, welcome, welcome. I am Marcy Billen. I am a resident here in Norman, Oklahoma, and I'm also a real estate agent, but each week I go live on Tuesday at 630 Central to talk about the news in Norman, things that may um, affect your life if you live here or you're thinking about moving here. So if this is your chance to catch up on some news, welcome. I hope we can have some fun. And if you're thinking about moving here, make sure you jump in with some questions if you have any. And of course, tell us where you're from because yeah, I like talking to you guys. All right. So I have three things to share with you guys tonight. Um, the first is going to be something about schools here. But before I jump into that, my cat is like jumping all over my exercise bike that's in my office right now. So she says hello. <laughs> but the first thing I want to cover uh, before we jump into the school issue that I wanted to bring up um, is if you enjoy the free content that I have for you here on YouTube, will you go ahead and hit that like button for me? Um, whether you're watching from YouTube or from somewhere else, that'd be super helpful. More people see the content when you hit the like button. And if you do watch my content a lot, go ahead and subscribe. That way I know that you're watching. That makes me feel good. I like that. So, all right, here we go. So the first thing I have to talk about is the SROs. So school resource officers in Norman were traditionally only in high schools and middle schools. And um, recently they voted to put school resource officers not only in high schools and in middle schools, but also in all of the elementary schools. So that happened, I think last week is what one of my friends told me. I don't have kids, so I don't always notice these things. But um, now we have school resource officers in all the elementary schools. They decided that this is for the safety of the kids and the teachers. Um, so the way that they did this at first, which I thought was really interesting, is it's actually sheriff's deputies that are the school resource officers inside the schools. My cat just turned on the exercise bike. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, so yes, essentially right now the sheriff's deputies are acting as school resource officers in the elementary schools. This won't last forever. Apparently they're working on a plan um, to put together or to um, like put actual police officers that are, um, I guess, trained for those specific situations and they're going to put those in the school. That, the beeping is the exercise bike because she turned it on. So uh, if she comes over here, I'll introduce you guys. But yeah. All right. I thought that was really interesting because I... Uh, I thought it was a good thing for the community to implement without um, taking a super long time to do it and waiting until something bad happens. So that's why I wanted to bring that up to you um, to make sure that you're aware. So the next thing, the next article I ran across that I thought was really interesting was one in the journal record. Guys, I promise I'm getting to the Bedlam stuff. We're going to talk about football. I promise. But I have two things to talk about first. <laughs> so... The first thing, or the employment thing I wanted to bring up, there was an article in the journal record about um, unemployment. And it was like a national article, but they did a really good job of bringing up, and I'm checking, sorry, I'm checking comments because my screen's over here. So yeah, they did a really good job of um, kind of explaining what's going on with the job market. So it looks like the job market, the like, um, we have people, less people looking for jobs now, which is probably a good thing. Um, the job market like didn't grow as much in the past month nationwide. It looks like nationwide our unemployment rate is sitting at 3.9%, which if you don't know, and like I think this is still the case, whenever I took economics in college, this was the case. 5% is kind of normal for unemployment rates. So having an unemployment rate of 3.9% is really good. That means everyone who wants to work pretty much has a job. Now, I know there are caveats to that. And the gig, the gig economy is a very 
real thing at this point. So I'm not discounting that at all. Um, so in Oklahoma, I wanted to share that 3.9% because it looks like our unemployment rate here in Oklahoma is actually 3% and not 3.9%. Um, if you didn't know, 1.74 million people in the state of Oklahoma actually work for the state. And then I have um, a couple of videos about job opportunities in Oklahoma and like the biggest employers. So I have one, oh my gosh, now she's in... My cat, man, she's the best. So I have a couple of videos, one about jobs in Norman, the five largest employers in Norman, and then one also about employers in Oklahoma. And I always point this out to people because I don't think that a lot of people understand that Oklahoma is an aerospace state. So a lot of our economy is actually based on the Department of Defense. That is the largest employer in Oklahoma. So I'm excited for that because one of the things they mentioned was that we're not seeing in the labor sector um, that we're in a recession. So everything like inflation has cooled off enough and um, we're seeing people work and have jobs that, you know, are looking for jobs. And that's really good because that means we're not in a recession, which makes me happy. Um, or at least in the labor sector. One thing that we were kind of expecting this year, and our CEO of our company talked about this a little bit earlier in the summer, but that we're expecting kind of rolling recessions between different sectors. So like a recession in real estate or a recession in energy or a recession in, you know, whatever we're talking about. So that, that was a really interesting concept to me, and I am looking forward to seeing how that plays out. So... Now onto the fun stuff. <laughs> so I decided to talk about Bedlam today because um, the football game happened on Saturday. So I never, I don't watch football. Like if some of you may know that if you watch my videos, uh, I don't watch football. If you live in Norman or if you're thinking about live in Norman, living in Norman, your life is kind of, it's not like it doesn't affect you to a great extent, the football, right? But it's there and people that you would not expect are kind of obsessed, which is fine. I think it's a super interesting cultural phenomenon. Like that's how I look at it because I guess I'm the nerdy person. But I wanted to look up kind of the history of Bedlam, the story of Bedlam to see because one of the things that people were pointing out because of the loss of the Sooners, the loss of OU for Bedlam on Saturday was that OSU has only won like 20 times in over a hundred years of playing this game. And I was like, man, that's not very many. So let me look up some facts about this. So Bedlam refers to the athletic rivalry between Oklahoma State University and the University of Oklahoma. I forgot to change my banner. I do that all the time. You guys have to tell me. <laughs> so... So we're not just talking about football when we're talking about Bedlam between OSU and OU. However, that's what's most famous. But did you know that the Bedlam games actually started between the wrestling um, teams from both schools? I didn't know that, but I thought that was really interesting and I wanted to tell you. Um, <laughs> so the first football game for Bedlam actually took place in 1904, apparently. And so if you don't know, um, Oklahoma became a state in 1907. So in 1904, lots of people lived in Oklahoma City. And I don't know when OSU became a university. I'm sorry, I can't remember. Um, but OU became a university in 1889, to my knowledge. That's what I remember seeing on the seal. And so but the state of Oklahoma wasn't a state until 1907. Most people rolled into this part of the state, Norman, in 1889. And then people started coming in after that. So what I'm saying is there wasn't very much here. They played that first Bedlam game in Guthrie. Guthrie was the capital at that time. Another super interesting fact that people don't know or think is really bizarre about Oklahoma, if you do know it, is that when Guthrie stopped being the capital of Oklahoma. They moved the capital by actually going and like stealing 
um, the state crest, I believe, from the Capitol building in Guthrie and moving into Oklahoma City. Like they did that in the dead of night. But that was, I think, in like 1908, maybe. Um, I don't know for sure the year on that, but I, thought, I think it's really funny because it sounds like so uh, frontiersmen of us, I would say, right? It's very interesting. So Oklahoma State University back then, which I don't know when the name changed, I'm sorry, I didn't look that piece up, was called Oklahoma a and okay? Um, OU won that first game in 1904, 75 to zero, 75 to zero. So it's pretty bad. Sorry. Sorry, guys. And um, so that was a 1904 game. The 1954 game, uh, the Bedlam game. So this was apparently found in a book. And like, I have not read this book. I read it online. But someone said that the 1954 game, there was an attempted fix on it. So someone wanted OSU to win or like, you know, the bookies wanted it, them to win. So they paid off the cook for the OU Sooners and they slipped in some heavy laxatives <laughs> into their food to try to make them sick so that uh, the Sooners would go ahead and lose the game, but it didn't work because the Sooners still won, I guess that year. So whatever. Um, games are now played odd years at OSU and even at OU. So it's 2023 right now. That means that OSU played in Stillwater on Saturday. I and my husband, my dear handsome, we were not in Stillwater, but we were very close to Stillwater on Saturday at a wedding. And it was my family. Uh, someone in my family was getting married, my cousin. <laughs> and I, I was a little puzzled as to why we were having this wedding on the Saturday because um, my family, all of my family are OSU fans. Most people in my family went to OSU, aside from me. And uh, <laughs> we were watching, well, I wasn't, but my husband and my dad were watching the game at the table. So my husband had it on um, the phone. And, uh, so I have a picture of them like watching. I didn't, sorry guys, I didn't put it up here for you guys, but I do have a photo of them watching the game together. And then, um, oh, my cat's crying because she wants to come up here and meet you guys, but she's not going to. Uh, then my other cousins were at the next table watching the game and like kind of, you know, very excited. Um, that was apparently a really good game. I do understand football to an extent. I just don't really like to watch it. Um, mostly I was just waiting to eat my dinner at that point, but it was a really interesting time to, <laughs> to be, um, my, I think my husband was like the only Sooner fan <laughs> in the whole room of like a hundred people. And then everyone was so excited that OSU did win the game on Saturday. And then everyone started pointing out that OSU has only won like 20 games of the past 100 and however many games. Um, so yeah, I don't know. And I don't know about the other sports, um, maybe like watching something better like basketball or wrestling. Um, I guess the hockey teams just started playing in the past couple of years. But they were kind of saying like, it was a sad year a little bit because this is the last year that the University of Oklahoma is going to be in the Big 12. They're moving to the SEC and OSU is not due to the SEC. So it'll be an, it won't, it will no longer be an in-conference game. It will be an out-of-conference game. I'm pretty sure they're still going to play it because I think everyone would have a fit if they didn't. So, yeah. So I hope uh, you learned as much as I did. <laughs> And if you want to do more research, please go ahead and come back and comment or tell me anything that you know about the traditions between OSU and OU. All right. I had a lot of fun here tonight, guys. Um, please let me know if you need anything at all. You'll find my contact information below in the description. And remember to hit that like button. All right. Thanks so much. Have a good night.